Hey, how's it going? Miles here at Attack the Hive, and welcome to this week's dry fire and live fire session. We're going to continue our talk about pistol grip pressure, but we're going to dive into some deeper details that are often neglected in classes, as well as other YouTube videos that you see on the web. This time, we're going to be isolating, or I should say addressing, the fact that we want to prevent our gun from dipping. Right, so if our gun starts here, it goes bang, it often dips. And if it dips, that slows us down. So we need to wait longer to take follow-up shots. So if you're interested in learning how to manage that, stay tuned. In many classes and many videos out there, you'll always hear instructors talk about preventing this muzzle from going very high or sharing techniques to help the gun shoot flat, which is, which is very important. But a lot of instructors are only focusing on this upward movement and how to bring it down or how to minimize this gun from going up. And it's very important, as I just mentioned, because the more you can minimize this gun from going up, the sooner you can take shots. Let me give you an example for those of you who are unfamiliar with what I'm talking about. So if this gun goes bang and there's muzzle flip, and let's say it goes really high, all right? And let's just say, I'm exaggerating here, let's say it takes half a second for this muzzle to go down. That means it would take you half a second in between shots, all right? And I'm just, I'm just using that half a second as an easy number to uh, understand here. But let's say that through good technique, instead of my muzzle going up here, and instead of waiting half a second to take another shot, I use good technique and it just goes right about here. And maybe the time there is less than point, maybe like 0.2 seconds. So that means I could shoot sooner, AKA shoot faster. But a lot of instructors and a lot of videos out there, they may neglect the downward movement. So this is great. You wanna get that muzzle down as fast as possible, but often the muzzle is going to dip. So if our target was right here, okay? The hand, right? Shooting my hand. And this gun goes up, but then you don't have the proper technique to stop the gun from going down. I still have to wait for the gun to go up. And often for a lot of shooters, the gun is actually going to wobble a lot, right? So it's not just one dip and then it goes back. It's one dip and it shakes a little bit. So that can slow you down if you wanna take quick follow-up shots. So we're going to focus on dry fire and live fire exercises to help prevent that, right? And this is a very personal thing though. So you're going to have to find the right amount of pressure. And you'll know what I mean in a little bit. You're gonna to have to experiment, but I'm going to share two things that really help regulate that downward dip of your of your pistol. Before we move on, we wanna thank Vetter Holsters for bringing you today's video. If you're unfamiliar with Vetter Holsters, they're a great quality holster company. They make everything in the USA and they sell all their holsters at a very reasonable price. They also have a very wide selection, a lot of different styles, a lot of different colors. I love this one the best because it matches Tactile Hive's branding. And they pretty much offer a holster for every major make and model pistol out there. You can combine it with a weapon light as well as uh, your red dot. So check them out in the description below. I think you guys will like them if you're looking for a good concealed carry holster. All right, if you watched last week's video, we talked about firing hand grip pressure. And in order to really understand the dry fire, we had to do live fire first. And we're gonna do the same thing for this week as well, because you need to understand what the feeling is of right, what right looks like and feels like live fire, then you're going to memorize that and copy that in dry fire. If you try to do it the other way around, you won't understand the feeling and you're not going to be able to match things up. So your performance live fire may not work out very well. We will talk more about the dry fire in a second, but let's move on to live fire first. Before I go live, I wanna discuss exactly what we are working on here. The two components that we really wanna be concerned about, our focus points, are the back strap and creating a solid backstop for this back strap. If you recall, in our other grip videos, we talked about the firing hand. Typically, when you learn from other instructors, they're going to say most of your pressure should be a C-clamp with your firing hand. Of course, you're gonna have pressure all over the place, but primarily front and back. So these four fingers in the front strap, and then the heel of your palm right here on the back strap. This is extremely important, this heel of the palm on the back strap here. The reason being is, and we discussed this in previous videos, but we're going to dive into more detail here, the the heel of the palm is gonna help regulate that dip. So the gun goes bang, and if I don't have a solid 
backstop here on the back strap, what will happen, the gun goes bang. Okay, so let's go this way. All right, let's say I had a lot of space here. Maybe there's all this space here. So the gun goes bang, and now there's room for it to move, so it actually dips. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we have solid contact with that back strap. And if you begin to shoot and you see your sights dipping, that means you might need to put a little bit more pressure on the back strap, ever so slightly. Now you do not want to do something called healing where you put too much and your shots go up. So this is why I said it's very personal. You're going to have to find the right amount of pressure for you so that the sights are just going to go up, down to the same spot instead of up and then all the way down and possibly wobble, right? So that's the first thing. When we take live fire shots, we are going to track Okay, our red dot or iron sights. And if we see our muzzle dip, first things first, we're going to put a little bit more pressure on the back strap. Now this is just the first component. If you don't have training partners who can see your muzzle, I recommend that you video yourself, put a video right here next to your gun, put it on slow-mo so you can see if your muzzle is dipping beyond the original starting point or if it's wobbling, right? So let's just isolate that first thing, live fire here. Okay, so I'm going to load and make ready. And what I'm doing, I'm not going to even use two hands because I just want to, I want you to see something. I'm going to exaggerate. So I'm going to have very little contact with the back strap. And pay attention to the muzzle of the gun here. Okay, actually I'll use two hands so that um, my hand doesn't flail from shooting with one arm. But I'm not going to put a lot of contact here in the back strap, okay? You will see that it dipped. Okay, so one more time here. It dipped beyond the original starting point. One more time. I can see my red dot track, it is going down. So if you see that, that means your gun is dipping, right? Again, we want it to just, from the starting point, go up and right back down to where, you know, again, where it started from. So now just isolating this, okay? We are going to try to minimize that. It may not be perfect because we're missing one other major component, which we're gonna to get to next, okay? So I'm here, so I'm gonna do this one really loose again and you're, just gonna, you're going to see the, the muzzle dip. Okay, it dipped right there. Now I'm going to put a solid backstop. I'm going to put more pressure here with the heel of my palm. And you'll see it is not dipping anymore like it was before, right? So taking or isolating just that component, that's the feeling you're going to have to mimic when you do dry fire. So you're going to have to do this enough times where you feel this pressure, memorize it, and then take it to dry fire. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step here deals with the support hand, okay? So we have our heel of our palm regulating the back strap here, but there's also another thing that will help us prevent this from dipping beyond where we want it to dip, and that is our support hand pressure, okay? Our support hand, what we want to do is when our index finger is here by the trigger guard, we are not just letting it relax here. We actually have some tension going upwards. I'm exaggerating here, but there should be some tension here on the trigger guard, okay? In combination with healing into the back strap and having tension on this trigger guard, you will prevent the muzzle from dipping beyond its starting point. Now you're going to have to experiment with this. That is the simple explanation. And those two things combined are really, really going to dramatically help you stop the gun from dipping. But you are not gonna get it overnight. You know, most of you won't get it overnight. So what you have to experiment with is everything we've covered in grip, you're going to apply that, but now you're going to add upward pressure on the trigger guard. A lot of different ways you can do this, okay? So don't get, don't get caught up in the technique. Remember, technique is a matter of style. So some people, they will have their own little grip here and they also have tension, they feel the tension here. And if you look at a lot of shooters, uh, professional shooters, for example, they will have calluses right here by their index finger, okay, right by the trigger guard because there's that tension. Okay, so when we combine this here, so let me, let me do this here. I'm going to let up some pressure just so you can see things here. I'm not going to have any upward pressure on this trigger guard. I'm literally just clamping down. There's no upward pressure. So you're going to see the gun, even though I have a two-handed grip, it already dipped. I'm gonna do this again, it dipped. Now I'm still going to have space here just on purpose. Now I'm going to put upward pressure on the trigger guard. My firing hand is still not correct but you'll see just that has already improved it. Now when I combine the back strap, pressure on the back strap with upward pressure on the trigger guard, you will see that the gun is not dipping, all right? Same thing, you now have to memorize that 
feeling, the amount of pressure you have on the trigger guard. It won't come overnight, so after you do live fire a lot, now you know the feeling, then we can replicate that in dry fire. That said, let me break out the dry fire mag and let's do the dry fire session. All right, so I have my dry fire mag here for the dry fire session, and I do recommend you use one if you have a striker fire pistol. The reason being is you do want to mimic or simulate actual trigger pulls, and by doing this and not having to worry to rack the slide or having to worry about mimicking how your trigger moves, kind of like shadow boxing and boxing, we are actually going to get the exact feel of your trigger using the dry fire mag. So, this is going to add that complexity. The more you're doing other things, the more your focus might be taken away from what we want to work on. And that is a good thing and a bad thing. I want it to be something you're using as a validation of your focus on the techniques. Meaning, the more you press this trigger, all right, you might think about this and what you're shooting and that can distract you from applying cr proper pressure with your support hand on the trigger guard or on the back strap with the heel of your palm. And so with that complexity, that is going to show that, okay, you might be forgetting to put that pressure. If we take away the trigger pulls, then you probably will get it, but we want you to also understand this and be able to apply it while you're pulling the trigger. So back to talking about what we're doing for dry fire, similar to last week, you can use any dry fire exercise you want. It, it does not matter because we're working on the grip. So if you want to do this from the draw, if you want to do movement, if you want to do transitions, you absolutely can. But now that sensation and the feeling that you had from live fire, you're going to do the same thing. And you could isolate first. Just start off with the back strap. Okay, make sure I have that here. Every rep you take, every set, you're before, during, after, you're maintaining that same pressure that you felt during live fire. So you would do this, whatever you want, whatever drills you want, okay? And when you're satisfied that before, during, and after, you really have the same pressure, now add the pressure that you felt with your support hand. And now we're doing the same exact thing. Nothing changes. It's very simple. You can do this dry fire in any exercise or any course of fire or drill that you want to work on. Just a reminder though, you need to figure out what the sensation is through live fire. Okay, you, you cannot do this with dry fire alone. This is one of the limitations of dry fire here, right? Understanding the recoil impulse and managing recoil and muzzle flip is part of recoil, right? So that's what you're going to do for dry fire, very simple. Live fire is also the same thing, very simple, because now we're just going to go back and the dry fire, the more you do this with the proper sensation in your firing hand and your support hand, that means your live fire should be improved. So again, you can use any live fire exercise, course of fire drills that you want, work any particular skill set, but just remind yourself to have that tension. Video yourself or have training partners take a look. Is that muzzle dipping? You want to prevent that with a combination of tension on the trigger guard as well as tension in the back strap. I hope you guys like this week's dry fire and live fire session. This is a very important detail when it comes to grip pressure and the performance of your gun. You do not want this muzzle dipping beyond its starting point if you want to take fast follow-up shots. So give it a try, understand the pressure, start off with live fire, move to dry fire, then back to live fire. As always, guys, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave us some comments. And if you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. See you guys next week.